Teo, it is so. Oh, no, it's so sad. <laughs> it's so it is... sad. Okay, great. <laughs> it is so, so lovely to, to meet you in kind of virtual, real life. I am so excited yes. to have this conversation with you. Thank you so much for joining me. And you brought Muffin along. Muffin! <laughs> He's so excited. Oh my word, he's just as excited as me. <laughs> he's excited! <laughs> and you're... He's waving! <laughs> I love my bird. <laughs> Awesome. I've got I've got some questions for you, um, but please feel free to you can you can also change the questions if you want. Uh, but I wanted to I wanted to ask you because you're such an awesome representative of somebody on the spectrum, and you're just so positive, and your energy just radiates throughout. Um, and Thank you. I, I wanted to ask you if you've got any um, advice for young female autistic adults um, on how to accept who they are and celebrate neurodiversity okay well celebrate okay that's very interesting i like to say like how to be proud actually that's what mm. i would say and like to celebrate is like when i think about celebrate it's like a party or something like that Okay. But I think if it's a way is to be proud to have neurodiversity and to have, be proud of having ADHD and how to be proud to have a learning disability, it's that it's nothing to be ashamed of is because is it's what you were like, you were, it's not, I mean, you are, you can be born with it. You can grow up with it. You can, you know, I mean, people with like, who were 50 years old, 80 years old can even you know be diagnosed with it you know i mean i don't know it's just you know it's nothing to be ashamed of and i think the thing is that um how can i put it this way is that yes you can get bullied by it and i know it's like a quirk and i think the way like let's first say learning disability is that if you're in high school or elementary school let's just say if you're doing a learning disability you can always have your quirks if you have math problems you can always find with the autistic people such as my story when i was in elementary i always find my learning disability to, to find other ways how to solve my math problems and that was my mm -hmm. learning disability with my adhd learning disability and adhd and autistic is that i all is you find your you you find your numbers and you mm -hmm. find wait how do i add them wait a second you can circle the number if you're doing anything you could find like a puzzle or something what also what my mom and dad and i did was to make me study my math we sang songs to do it and oh, that nice. helps a lot of learning disabilities and also um with that helped me learn my phone number and that helps a lot of learning disability um, people and ADHD and autistic mm -hmm. people. A song, like if you, such as like, we learned um, my first phone number I ever had with the Mamma Mia song. Mm -hmm. I think it was Honey Honey, if you, if you know that song. <laughs> um, and that was really clever. So mm -hmm. with that can help parents too, if they want mm -hmm. to help their, you know, children with math problems mm -hmm. and English problems and stuff like that is always trick like trick them and help them with their favorite the favorite things that they have and that can help them with their school problems it's always yeah. like quirks and even with the um like learning disabilities and all those stuff is that i think it's like a really cool thing to be proud of it's like i know that when i'm also outside you spot things that are so different that no other people can find so you can find a weird cool bug and you're like, look at that bug. And that person's like, I don't see the bug. They're like, mm. but look, it's right there. And it's like microscopic, mm. so tiny that you've never seen it. And they're like, they're searching for it. But you have this, like the superpower eyes, you know what I mean? Yes. And you can see it. And that's like my learning disability, my mm. ADHD, and my autistic. And so your eyes are like a superpower. So that's what I think. So that's why you can be proud of it. Cause it's like a superpower that you can see anything that's so cool, learn something so cool. 
You also have your favorite interests, like, you know, your celebrities, your sports, your animals, whatever, your politics, anything, whatever that person's interested in. Some people can get in trouble with their autism and learning disability, like, you know, with other problems like mental health, but that's nothing to be ashamed of either, because, you know, you know, your family under, I mean, your family probably won't understand as much as you do, but you can always, you know, mainly if you have the greatest friend, like if you have a best friend, they will definitely understand. Even though if they're not neurodiversity or like autistic and all that, if you talk to them as much as you can and tell them your feelings, that best friend will definitely understand. I know I have a best friend and it took her like, many years but now she totally understands she probably doesn't understand as much but i know she definitely tries i know my my mom tells her a lot and i didn't even know that that my best friend and mom actually sometimes text so maybe sometimes I, I i feel like they text sometimes behind my back and mom actually tells her this is what teo has and all that i'm like huh that's weird <laughs> and then also, um, but you can also have an autistic friend who's also, mm -hmm. and you're autistic. And that's also amazing. So you can have a non-autistic or an autistic friend. And it's just, you know, the whole world can love you or, you know, it's interesting. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I think. So that's how you can be proud and celebrate. Yeah. That's what I think. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Those are like golden nuggets. I feel like yeah. the, the interest-based activities are really important and we all learn differently, right? So I, I used to, yeah. with my math songs, I used to get to the answer and I didn't know how and I couldn't explain it. So my teacher always thought mm. that I was cheating and I was like, no, but I just saw it. I don't know yeah. how. <laughs> But we just, we learn differently. And I think any neurodivergent exactly. individual, you just have to find out how you learn and how you retain that information and then, yeah. and then use that. And coupled with having somebody that really understands you, like a best friend, your mom, your mom's awesome. Yeah. I loved her on the show. Thank <laughs> you. I <laughs> love that. I spoke with um, Professor or Dr. Grandin Temple Grandin and she was telling me like you know some people have these kind of brains and some other people have those kind of brains and you just have to kind of go into what you're good at and what you mm. enjoy because that's that's the point in life I feel like is finding something that you're you enjoy and that can become a career you know exactly mm. that is so true I found out that I was great at acting and mm. mainly being on the camera yes. maybe not I mean <laughs> maybe not like the real acting but mainly like just being on the camera mm. and that was like wow i didn't know that i mean like and i was like i really like being on the camera and like telling my story mm. I, I mean i don't mind doing the acting stuff i like doing extra work if i'm on a movie or a tv show mm. but if it was like being on a camera i like sharing my story that's mm. what I like to do. Of autism, do you think it can make it more difficult to find a partner? Or... No, no, of course not. Like, heck, if Donald Trump has a partner and he's so weirdo, anybody can have a relationship. And I like doing the influence stuff, like on the social media and like inspiring mm. people and like helping people. That's what I really yeah. love. And I'm really mm. good at that. And yes. I'm like, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's awesome that you, that you found that out because I think yeah. that you're an amazing inspiration for other people, not just neurodivergent individuals, but also like the people that are that are dating people that are on the spectrum or that are that have friends because you just give such a fresh approach. And people are like, oh, mm. I get it now. I understand why Teo might be looking at trucks for an hour, but not really interested <laughs> in my conversation that much. It's because that's all awesome for you. That, but I do. <laughs> no, but it's it's what you like, right? Right? And it's, and I think that I know, to, yeah. to be honest, I don't do that now, but I do, I used to like counting trucks, but mm. I think that I now, I don't know what I like doing, like what my special hobby is now. Like if I, if I do an outside thing, like, but the count, I still count the trucks sometimes, yeah. but like, man, oh my God, that was like my really special hobby. I have like mm. mind games, like to help 
I still have mind games a lot. Like yeah. I have word of the day, like, but oh my, I can't explain that. That's always been like this word of the game that I made up. I can't explain the rules. The <laughs> rules are very complicated. <laughs> it's just like a word of the day thing for me. Like I can't explain it. It will take <laughs> a year to explain how I made up the game and how I made up the rules and stuff. Well, it's, we like, can... it's just very complicated. <laughs> We can we can have another chat about that and then just yeah. have a series of like, I think I write down the board and I'm yeah. not sure how I made it up. <laughs> no, really, I think that would be good. You could even start a game online with other people. I would really love explore. that. Because <laughs> it's just it's like a really mind tweezer and it makes it really it really made me really think, like in case if I'm depressed mm -hmm. or anxiety, and then I'm yeah. like, wait what's the word of the day <laughs> oh awesome yeah but that's it like you're you're helping yourself with all of these things yeah you're focusing on something else and like redirecting yeah. maybe even and then and then those are coping skills right and it's very healthy yeah it's not like other coping skills that might not be that healthy speaking about parents because you've got such an amazing um model parent um what, what do you think that other parents can do to help their kids if they're diagnosed or undiagnosed just to kind of understand autism more if you if you can go back in time what would you say would be some things oh that... well if i could go back in time to tell mom and dad it's also just for even for non like you know non if, who doesn't have autism and all that i think that the, ew, bug, sorry um <laughs> i think it's just a great advice what i think is that they should also they should just like let the child speak for themselves mm -hmm. if i had a child i mean i would nurture it and i would mm -hmm. always want to know what illnesses what chronic illnesses and see if they had autism and adhd and learning disability mm -hmm. that's for sure but I think what I would do is like let them talk to me about their feelings. What you said was really good because you said, you know, parents should accept their kids for who they are. Yeah. Um, and they should let them decide how they want to learn, how they want to communicate, what they're thinking and about. How they want to diagnose themselves, I think. Exactly. I remember the story very well that mom was at a grocery store in Texas and saying that look my mom um my adopted daughter we just adopted her from um the orphanage and we have no idea what's going on she's not speaking english because she speaks romanian we don't know she has she's like you know we think we're bad parents and blah 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 you know all that stuff mm. going on and all that and then this nice lady next to her at the grocery store said oh yeah that's just, that's happened to us and all that we, th we know what's going on. She has sensory integration and all that. Oh, and wow. mom said, oh my God, you just saved my life. <laughs> and, and then, so she looked it up and then mm. we went to a lot of doctors. Mm. And then by the time we moved to Australia, we went to a lot of autism doctors. So I think at five, I got diagnosed by sensory integration. That makes mm. more sense. And then by, by the, actually, by a few months later after i moved to australia we got diagnosed by autism but to be honest the day i remember just getting diagnosed by crohn's in 2009 that was a big thing because mm. autism hasn't been the main thing about me it's just been crohn's i've always accepted my autism and my adhd i think i was diagnosed with adhd very young i was diagnosed with adhd in texas i remember because i took my adhd medicine on in texas yeah i took concerta okay if All you right. know that medicine yes yeah, yeah, yeah i hated that medicine did you what how did it make I you feel that. that was oh my god just taking that medicine i had to take that medicine since i was like six years old up to like uh 18 years old and then by the time i was 19 i moved to a different medicine finally <laughs> but what did it make you feel like lethargic depressed or, really oh my god oh, yeah that medicine had like oh that medicine had um because it has a side effect of depression mm. and like no eating it has a lot of side effects once you um take it for many years 
Oh, that's horrible. I'm yeah. sorry. And then yeah. once I stopped taking it, I was finally eating. I felt happy. Because mm. once you take it for so many years, you get the bad side effects. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's And I nice. got the bad side effects on the last year I, after I took it. I mean, it's always important, let's just say this, to speak to a psychiatrist about medication and not take yeah, my I word. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, my psychiatrist is so great. Oh, that's cool. So you've, you've actually found the people in Australia quite helpful, like the professionals. Oh, there. my God. I have a great psychologist. It's a great oh, psychiatrist. I even had an ADHD doctor. He put like a cap on my head and did the do, 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 do. <laughs> Like, I I love the doctor, but I hate them doing all the yeah the gooey stuff and that. Uh, and like, do, like writing tests and then math tests and spelling mm. tests and I hated going to that doctor, but I didn't mind seeing him. Just not yeah. the work stuff. <laughs> I had to like you know close my eyes and like mm. relax my brain. And be absolute and you know i had like really high adhd back then i was like fidgety and, yeah. that. and and then i actually lost all of my hair back in 2009 uh, no. and then they did it in 2012 up to 2015 and mm. then that's when all of my hair was growing back in they did it so hard and i was like oh, bald as a cucumber oh. and i was like ow you're doing it hard can't you see her no hair yeah <laughs> Why did you lose your hair? Yeah. I had to take chemo medicine because of my Crohn's disease. And Crohn's oh. disease is an inflammatory bowel disease, but the Crohn's needed cancer medicine, apparently. Mm, that's horrible. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, you're always so positive. Now. Yeah, you're always so positive. It's amazing yeah. to see. And it's also okay not to always be positive, but you're just like a sunlight to me. Like every time well, I saw you. I'm not. That, and that's yeah. okay too. Yeah, that's all right too. But I think it's like good yeah. for, for people to see like all the different parts of you because I think yeah. so many people can relate to what you're going through, but just how you yeah. manage everything in your life is really, really beautiful. It's an inspiration. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, I just, you know, when I'm at my house, like all of my carers, all of my mom, when I go to mom and dad's house also, like, oh my God, they can see all of my anger, all of my yelling, all of my, yeah. like, seriously, I could, I always get anger attacked. Like I go volcanic and all that. So I feel bad for my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Well, though, I think it's good. They can hear your beautiful voice. They're like, oh, Teo's back. Teo's yeah. <laughs> back. <laughs> so cool. No, but it's yeah. good to have those, like, different coping skills. We all get angry, right? Um, I mean, there's yeah. different ways, and we can sometimes find different ways to to manage it or to, to even, like, incorporate sports or some activities or something to help us with it. But sometimes we just need to shout or, like, hit oh, something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's what we need to do. I know. I mean... I'm pretty, like, you know, in the public eye, and I, you know, I'm always happy and all that, but, you know, sometimes in my room, I'm, or, like, just at home, I'm like, you know, I, I just, I can't be, ha I just yeah. done with this happiness, and I'm like, <laughs> I have to yell. <laughs> yeah, just yell it out. <laughs> yeah. We, we have a, we work with a child that we created, like, a kicking corner for him, because he was quite angry at, at at a lot of different things and he was I think he wasn't very well understood so we created this kicking corner and he just goes to this corner and just oh, like he, great. he created oh, <laughs> yeah and he could even break stuff in that corner and that's his Do you break plates yeah, no. <laughs> oh go to a Greek wedding I promise you it's the best wedding oh, ever oh, just oh. like it is break place that you're allowed to. It's like everybody's doing it. It's awesome. Yeah. Sadly, I broke a lot of phones in my past because of my anger. That's okay. So, like, sometimes I feel it's good to sometimes break technology. We're just like, I'm done. I'm gonna throw the road these phones and the away. Is, it's all about the technology. Exactly. It's like, oh, why did I break it? Yeah. Oh. But, but speaking about that, Teo, if, if you could give some advice for siblings, so like, let's say your brother or your sister is on the spectrum or they've got, um, they're autistic and they've got ADHD, how would you say, how could they better understand their sibling or what can they do to maybe make it a little bit easier for themselves and their sibling? Do you have any advice? And the siblings like non-autistic, you mean? Yes, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, well, I think that it can answer easily. And um, because I have a non-autistic sister and I love her so much, but sometimes it can be a bit hard and she's gonna be watching this. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> but sometimes it can be hard to like, you know, even with my mom and dad, like he is as anyone to be honest but sometimes like it, since we're talking about siblings it depends how close you are and how not close you are that's the thing mm. and my sister and i are, are quite close but even like that i i don't like to talk about my autism thing or all that mm. and and even and i don't even like talking about my feelings to her sometimes because you know i feel like it's awkward sometimes mm. and i don't even like doing that with my dad sometimes no offense dad <laughs> <laughs> But like I always, I always talk about my feelings with my mom because you know, mm. they're mom. It's a mom, yeah. Mm. And um, but with this sibling, like a brother or sister, um, my future brother-in-law. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, the autistic person can, you know, try to share it, and they might just over talk sometimes. Like I so get that. Mm. Like um, and maybe sometimes um with anyone like a non-autistic they might get tired of that people can shut off their ears you know what i mean if you just blabber 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 and you know autistic people just do that and even adhd people and even all that i mean because such as if you talk about your favorite persons like say taylor swift or star wars or stuff like that like what a guy would say or let's say Harry Potter, like that's the main topic. Like a lot of autistic people say, I'm not a Harry Potter fan, just FYI. <laughs> but um, like, let's just say the topic is Harry Potter. That person, that autistic person says Harry Potter a lot and they talk about the whole thing about Harry mm -hmm. Potter. Normally the non-autistic person just shuts their ears off mm -hmm. and they just say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, cool, cool, you know. You probably mm -hmm. heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Tell me more. Tell mm -hmm. you know that that's the normal punchline. Mm -hmm. What they say, mm -hmm. and you know I've heard that a lot when I talk about you know all of my favorite people or mm -hmm. you know or what I want to talk about or my feelings and all that. Just to mm -hmm. anyone. I mean, mm -hmm. not. I mean, my sister definitely listens, of course. Would you say that the your advice would be for that sibling to to try and indulge in that conversation? I would um, do if I was just you know if say if my sister was autistic and I was non autistic, I would try to acknowledge saying, "Oh, clearly she does like Harry Potter." I have to turn on my ears. I would turn on my ear. Mm -hmm. Keep going. I have to try to listen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you can't just shut that autistic person and you can't mm -hmm. shut out your sibling. You need to, you, you need to understand. And it, you, you know what would be nice for that sibling? Maybe if they can research that mm -hmm. favorite person, the favorite animal or like mm -hmm. anything or what they're talking about or maybe, yeah. you know, that would be mm -hmm. nice for that autistic person. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And another thing that would be like, um, nice it's like um i think autistic people if they they want to trust people like especially a sibling mm -hmm. a lot and if they want to share their secrets a lot mm -hmm. i think i i've heard this from a lot of my um friends a lot with non-autistic people and i think i've like um and I, i've been getting this from some people like my fans a lot and I, I, and I also have been researching this a lot, actually. I've been researching a lot about autistic and the, like how the behavior, cause I've been, I've been wanting to prepare for this interview <laughs> a lot. And also, um, especially for this question. <laughs> um, but the thing is that it's like, if you want to talk to your sibling, is that I, 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 I research about the sibling and the non-autistic and all that. It's that one big thing is that what autistic would want to do and an autistic person is that I've heard one thing that might clash is that 
the autistic people might want to i think the reason why non-autistic and autistic siblings clash a lot is because the autistic person i think they they think their trust and all that maybe because some siblings um are so like the non-autistic are so worried about that autistic one and they tell the parents you know what i mean mm. Oh, that and, makes a lot of sense, actually. You know what I mean? Yeah. The non-autistic siblings mm. tell the parents about their secrets, mm. like, you know, such as, you know, a best friend who got mm. bullied and all that, or any anything and all that. Mm. So that non-autistic sibling tells a story to mm. the parents, like the mom and dad, or the stepmom and dad, or the grandparents or stuff. Mm. And then that autistic sibling doesn't ever talk to that sibling again yeah exactly you know that makes it yeah because the trust is broken and that's so important it's so sacred broken. right yeah mm -hmm. yeah that yeah. that makes a lot of sense like even if it, if i think about like we work with young kids and adults and the the trusting relationship is the most important thing and that's what autistic people want they want trust mm -hmm. even with a relationship with a love relationship they want mm -hmm. trust because autistic people love trust mm. that's the biggest thing because they've had childhood trauma they've had bullying trauma they mm. just want trust and i think the reason and their family is the biggest thing that they want that autistic um sibling i mean that uh, yeah i said it right that autistic mm. sibling wants to trust that sibling mm. so they could be best friend and they just want that trust and that is so important because it's exactly like you said right it's from from the other side if you look at it from the other side it's that sibling that's trying to help they think that they're trying to help yeah. their autistic person and totally understand and they, what that yeah. normal autistic sibling's doing they're just trying to help but, but, in, in, mm. but in the autistic version and it's true it's not helping at all mm, yeah that's it's actually just making it worse yeah that's very very valuable going into school the conversation about school it's right? always school and that's what mm. ruins the bonds yes and also that's when a lot of bullying happens right so if exactly. we if we do speak about bullying i don't know if you want to open up about this but have you ever i can i don't mind have you ever been bullied and if so how did you manage these feelings okay so i haven't been bullied well i ha okay i have been bullied a lot but they haven't used the autistic word i mean and i mean they probably knew that i was autistic but they never said it but i was always like loud bouncy and like energetic like my kind of friends group like and the people that i hung out with i only hung out with my best friend um and her like her group um i got bullied by their group sometimes a lot actually um mm. but um Sorry. but in a way the whole school knew i was energetic bouncy and all that i did and when i was in year seven i got bullied by your 10 girls and that was like mm. pretty tall girls and all that mm. that that one was just bullied because i was bald so that was a crone mm. thing but then later on once they those girls graduated i got bullied about being loud being energetic and mm. i even got bullied by the teachers no offense guys to be mentioning you <laughs> um i mean mm. to be fair i got some of the teachers were like why are you so loud why? i mean they the teachers loved me so much i mean i will say that um and i love them they were just a they were a, just a joy they i mean they were they were amazing but at the very end they some sometimes at the very end and that in the middle part they just got sick and tired of me being very loud and bouncy mm. and all that and they just got tired of that especially at the very end and i just got very tired of that and i was like you know what f off <laughs> um and then i skipped school a lot i was like you know what if you don't want me then i'm skipping school got caught mm. sometimes but then mom and dad were like you know what fine you know school just not giving you joy then you can skip school sometimes but mm. you know <laughs> So I awesome that that that, your mom they did get mad about that but you know i was like whatever <laughs> um but they understood why i skipped school mm. because you know 
everything. I mean, um, because, you know, they were giving me homework. They were, the school was pretty crap to me. All the kids really didn't like me. Um, they kind of avoided me and all that. Um, I was just very lonely. I got bullied by one teacher um, about that I won't mention about that, but it was all about mm. my singing and guitar mm. playing and all that. That's horrible. I'm sorry. It's like you're just being yeah, interested yeah, in yeah, they hobbies. Didn't, some of yeah, that teacher just, just didn't like my music and my singing. So she tried so hard. I mean, she kind of liked it, but I mean, sorry to put this on air, but she deserves this. <laughs> but yeah. oh my god, um, I that uh, after you know, I, on the very day of the graduation, everyone got like our music class um, did the a song for the graduation, and everyone got a bit of a solo, and then I was the cheerleader girl just doing hey 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 hey. She got me like a revenge, I think, just oh, so I didn't get a solo of singing. I got so pissed. I didn't mm. yell at her, but I was so mad. Mm. So everyone got a solo of that part of the song. Like everyone got a piece of the song of the word. I was just mm. the hey, hey, hey girl. Mm. And then after that, after that day of the graduation, ever since till that day by now, I haven't picked up my guitar. I haven't no. picked up the day of singing. She traumatized me no. for singing. Please and start. Then, like, we can do it together. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did in my HSC, which is like a, a like it's like the SATs, but it's mm. um on the for your twelfth grade. I did the song "The Wither and I" from Wicked. Holy mm. moly, she failed me so much. She gave me the lowest grade ever, and I what? worked that song off my ass yeah and i mainly got bullied by that teacher the most yeah. and oh my god that gave me heart trauma like not heart mm. trauma but like trauma for yeah, the rest of my PT, life PTSD. i don't listen to wicked anymore every mm. time i hear a song like define gravity the wizard and i or like any song from wicked the musical mm. i have like almost a heart attack now and I'm so sorry. I have unfollowed everybody on the cast who from the original cast of the Wicked of Wicked, the Australian version, like anybody and all that. Mm. I'm 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 sorry, but except for the two people from the Australian version, because you know they've always been nice to me. Um, mm. but I, I just can't deal with the the musical Wicked anymore because I I it's traumatized me because mm. of that teacher. Uh, that's and horrible. I'm sorry. I I mean, every time I hear it, like, there's been so many songs, there's been so many clips of that song in any TV show, any movie, or any anything, and I'm like, I can't shut that off. I'm like, mm. I go to, like, a little kind of class on every Monday, and there was, like, a few days, like, two weeks ago, there was the song Defining Gravity, and in the movie that we were watching with that class, I was like, shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. Mm. That teacher was like, what is going on with you? Why are you having a panic attack? I was like, you have to shut that off. Mm. And she was like, what is going on with you? Why, why are you freaking out? I was like, shut that movie off now. Mm, I can't true. listen to Wicked. Yeah, that's but that's horrible. Yeah. Are, you, are you working on this a little bit with your psychologist? Because it's something that- Oh, I that have been. Yeah, it's something that yeah, she I mean, knows that yeah. that teacher traumatized me for the rest of my life. I mm. and my mom was so pissed. Mm, I can imagine. Are you yeah. so? How do you how do you manage that? Like, how do you work through this, or at least how find like work through it? Or, um, like, coping skills or. Uh, with Wicked, I just you know I still have this album on my phone. So sometimes, like once a year, I listen to it just to get over it. But I don't listen to The Wither and I. I can listen to some of the songs, but I can't listen to The Wither and I ever again. Um, but now I have followed the cast again, so that's a good thing. So that's like one step. So it's just good. I so I that's like a step progress that I followed all the cast from all around the world, which is good. 
mm. but I haven't listened to the um the Broadway cast like probably for two years so that's sad um but I don't know I I you know I don't know how I'm progress mm. I think the thing is that I you know I just take it one day at a time I've been mm. going to a music therapy and we talk about it a lot. We talk about that teacher. We talk about what's been going on. So my mom set up this person and she's a like a music teacher and she's a therapist. Mm-hmm. So I've been singing more, but I can't like, I'm too scared to sing in public. So I only mm-hmm. sing in front of her, but we mm-hmm. sing together to help it better, mm-hmm. so, which is great. Okay. And so that's like, that's much better. Mm-hmm. I still haven't picked up my guitar ever since that day. Mm, so which is sorry. so sad yeah that is i just sad. can't pick up mm. and the saddest thing is that my mom um like on that year of that um when i did that song she bought me the most expensive like the biggest expensive guitar ever and she mm. won an auction on ebay mm. and that really was so sad mm. and yeah. i feel the- so bad for that maybe maybe one day you'll get there again just take it like you said one day at a time i think it's also important to note here that bullying has got long-term effects and if you're in a position of power like if you're a teacher or whatever you need to you need to really be careful about how you help kids and what you say to them and how you how you guide them because it's such an important role especially exactly especially Mm. since she's a teacher yes exactly exactly she should be one that you you inspired music teacher that people want to go in the music industry yeah well i'm gonna i'm gonna see if we can't speak more anytime you want (laughs) because then we can we can work through this together my sister-in-law is a musician and she'll love playing with you i'll send you some of her some of her stuff I i think you would like it um, I know that we don't have that much time left here, but I just wanted to ask you, saucy details, are you dating anyone at the moment? I'm not, sadly. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not. And I don't think I really want to date mm. for right now. I'm just, I just don't want to because I'm like, I'm working on like my, myself, my mental health mm. and like just, you know, I think the thing is that I just, I'm not ready to date after Love on Spectrum, like right now. And I think I'm like, you know, I am just don't really want to. <laughs> mm, that's fine. And that's, that's great. If you're working on yourself, doing things for yourself and just focusing on what you want to do, then I think that's perfect. I think, was, I think it's too soon after Love on Spectrum. Yeah, exactly. Take your time, really. Do you, yeah. have, any, do you have any advice for somebody that wants to date that is maybe near a divergent, like how to get them out there and... I think that if you want to date, please, please, I'm begging. If you do date, you have to find the right person. I mean, you, I mean, look for so many people before you right, find the right person. And if you do find a person to date, I am begging, take it slowly, not like I did with, you know, like with Mm. Rosie, and take it slowly, please get to know them, please get to know them, and um, talk, and and don't just talk on social media, please go see each other in person, like, like, what once a week twice a week maybe a three times a week like you need to see them mm. like this this social media business is ruining our world mm. like seriously <laughs> it's just i mean the thing with social media is that when you text or message or whatever the social media is it's that mm. when you're messaging you can't hear each other's voices so people mm. when they read it they just come up with the voices in their head. They think you're angry or excited or sexy or whatever the thing is. And I think when you're coming up to the person, you can, they hear the voices. You can actually hear what they're saying. And I think that's the biggest thing about dating and meeting a friend first and then a romance. Cause then you can hear 
that. Mm, you can hear is, what they're saying and all mm, that. That is the best advice on dating that I've ever heard because it's always like don't do social media. Exactly. And don't follow them first. And don't follow them first. Like don't follow <laughs> first, them on social media. Social first. media, yes, exactly. That's also great advice. But I think what you just said, right? Because like a lot of people would say no look at people's facial expressions okay but what if you're really not comfortable with looking at people's facial expressions like listen to their voice listen to the emotion in their voice and that's so true it's like we read something do what like, morgan and i do just look around our he heads yeah exactly like yeah. at the opera bar just look over there and look over there just don't look at each other's head just listen to the voices yes that's it, a waste of the day <laughs> yeah and it tells you so much right if you can listen to somebody's tone and if they get if they get excited or like you said sometimes we can read something we're like oh that might be an angry statement or a sexy statement and the other person's like but i didn't even like that was not What's my intention angry? <laughs> yeah exactly that's really exactly. really good advice <laughs> yeah um, but social media yeah. always messes up everybody yeah i think so even I think. the emojis they mm. use like people sometimes don't even know how to use emojis like mm. me <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know what emoji meanings are yeah exactly sometimes i'll send like a heart and i'm like oh i don't know if i should have said this heart this is like a business it's person and i'm like what? yeah exactly like what the meanings are my mom knows what she... the meanings are oh and she I'm needs like, to tell how me how the heck do you know what the meanings are that's so funny i didn't even know if they, they had meanings i know i'm also like going to google this afterwards because <laughs> i usually gonna... said uh, so i said the yellow heart usually i don't know is that what's the meaning of the yellow i like the yellow heart okay well the... favorite color. <laughs> no, me too. should i just continue with the yellow heart <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm safe with the yellow heart. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least our conversations are safe. That's um, yeah. I don't Do know. I'm clueless. <laughs> we can we can help each other. Do you have uh Taya, do you have any upcoming projects that you wanted to share about? I do actually. <laughs> I will be in a movie at the next oh, year with Tilden Swinton. Oh, that's the famous Oscar winning um that's award awesome. winning. And it's called 3,000 Years of Longing, and it should be coming out next month. That's amazing. Okay, so we need to get this video out before the movie launches so that yeah. we, we, more people can go and watch that movie. Um, it's called 3,000 Years of Longing. Okay, so we've got about 30 days of longing for this movie to come out. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. I can't wait to see you. I'm really excited. The... Yeah, I can imagine. How did you find acting? Like, different to, like, kind of an autobiography It was on, really on interesting. And, oh, my God. Being with Tilda Swinton and this yeah. director, who's a famous director, which will, that will come out later. Yeah. And this other actor, which that is a surprise. I will tell you that. <laughs> that will come out in May. Mm. Um, anyway, but, um, yeah. It's very... It was a very interesting movie. Oh yeah. my god! I can. I will tell everyone the experience and what my costumes were when it comes out. Oh okay. My god. Yes. Yes. We'll yes. Hear a whole video about my costume. Okay. Well. Also, hopefully, we can do another video and we can talk about your costumes because that sounds amazing. Oh god! Yeah. Can't wait to share all about my costume. And I had a baby. Uh, did you? <laughs> no, not a real life baby, but you know, I had a baby on the set. Okay. It was my baby. Okay. Was like awesome. had, my character had a baby. Okay, cool. That's oh, awesome. I was very scared. Because I was thinking, yes, I would like be scared of like, oh, I have to remember oh, my God, lines. I don't imagine. Trust me with a real baby. <laughs> I would not let them trust me with that. Maybe one day, one day they're gonna, you're gonna trust yourself with a real baby, baby. Uh oh. <laughs> No. Oh my word, Thea, you always make me laugh and I have such a good time and it's so nice for me to speak with you. Thank, Thank you. you so, so, so much for your time and just being here and being you. Aww. <laughs>